Welcome to the 6 o'clock weather with Brooke and Lauren, bringing you today's world weather details. This just in, thunder and lightning storm forming in the area. On to Lauren with the details. Thanks Brooke. As you can see here, the high levels of moisture and strong lifting of air is creating a storm of rain, gusty winds, hail, snow, and thunder and lightning in this area. This storm is looking almost as bad as the thunder and lightning storm in December 1963 in Dover, Delaware. Back to you, bro. Just a warning for our viewers. Be cautious. The strong electric charges causing the lightning are heating up the air around it, causing it to expand and create a boom of thunder. The sooner the clap of thunder after the strike of lightning, the closer the storm is to you. Breaking news! A tornado has just struck Kansas. Reporter Lauren is in the field to tell us about it. Thanks, Brooke. I'm here with tornado survivor Dorothy and her dog Toto to see how they are coping with the recent tornado. What, what did, did you see? Well, after the thunderstorm, I saw a rotating funnel of air and I knew I wasn't in Kansas anymore. Well, what you saw was fast rising air in the thunderstorm that began to spin, forming a funnel of air and moisture. As the air rose, it was replaced by cool air at the surface, and the rotation became faster. The rising air caused a pressure difference that increased with the speed. Well, does this remind you of anything you've ever experienced before? Yes. Me and Toto survived the tornado outbreak in August 1939. In rural Kansas, that was when the Wicked Witch of the West died. Wow, very interesting. Back to you in the studio, Brooke. Thanks, Lauren, Dorothy, and Toto. Today, July 14th, marks the anniversary of the Montreal Flood of 1987, which happened when a series of strong thunderstorms crossed the island of Montreal, Canada, over 100 millimeters of rain fell during a two and a half hour time span and the land could no longer soak up any more water. Let's go to Montreal now where a crew member and a victim of these floods, Renee Chabot, tells us her experience. Thanks Brooke. I'm here with Renée Chabot to tell us about her experience with this flood. Bonjour. As you can see, my basement is destroyed. I have all these things on the walls from the flood <laughs> 25 years ago. <laughs> the water was up here. We are very sorry, Renée to hear of all the trouble this flood has caused you. Now on to Southern California, where citizens are experiencing a heat wave. Excuse me? Hi there. Hi, how have you been finding this heat wave? Oh my gosh. Three days in 32 plus degree weather? It's killer. It's a runner's worst nightmare. Why is the universe doing this to me? That's because of the high pressure causing clear skies, which brings more direct and intense solar heating, causing higher humidity. Last time I remember running in conditions this bad was in June 2013 here in Southern California where it reached 129 degrees Fahrenheit. North of this heat wave, a drought is currently happening in California. Facing one of the most severe droughts on record, the state is making sure citizens are able to cope. Being situated at around 30 degrees from the equator makes long periods of time with little rain common. From 2008 to 2011, California experienced a drought which shifted east during the summer of 2011 to affect a large part of Texas. In 2013, the California drought returned and intensified. This year shattered low precipitation records everywhere in California. Three main types of droughts exist. 
Hydrological drought is when watersheds lack available water, which can impact hydroelectric power companies, farmers, and communities. Meteorological drought is when a lack of precipitation relative to normal amounts of precipitation occur. This is the most common definition of a drought and is usually the one found on news broadcasts. An agricultural drought occurs when soil moisture becomes a problem. Shortages in precipitation and reduced groundwater levels can create stress and problems for crops. studio was lucky enough to get an interview with Leslie Applebottom, a meteorologist who studies hurricanes, tropical cyclones, and typhoons. Hi Leslie, we are so happy for you to be here today. Happy to be here. My first question for you is, what's the difference between a hurricane, a tropical cyclone, and a typhoon? They are all severe cyclones, fed by convection currents, that occur when warm air rises, creating low pressure, causing unstable conditions. They all have very strong winds that can cause severe damage. So what's the difference between each one? Well, each is different depending on where it occurs. So where might a hurricane occur? A hurricane would occur in the western Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, or the eastern Pacific Ocean. A, rem a memorable hurricane would be the Newfoundland Hurricane, which killed over 4,000 people in 1775. And then where would a typhoon occur? A typhoon develops in the northwestern Pacific Ocean or the China Sea. They start off as tropical thunderstorms. The strong wind pulls in moisture from the oceans. The thunderstorms convert the moisture into heat. The heat causes more air to flow to the center of the storm, causing evaporation. All the heat and air flow toward the eye, creating the typhoon. A memorable typhoon is Typhoon Haiyan which reached this wind speed of 314 kilometers per hour and occurred in the Philippines. And what about a tropical cyclone? A tropical cyclone develops in the Indian Ocean and around Australia. Tropical cyclones form due to latent heat driven by significant thunderstorm activity and have a warm core. A memorable tropical cyclone is Cyclone Yazi, which was a destructive tropical cyclone that made a landfall in northern Queensland, Australia on February 3rd, 2011. An ice storm is expected to hit the north in the next week. Upon touching the surface, rain will freeze, creating a coat of ice on the ground. This here is a clip from the 2013 North American ice storm, a severe ice storm that struck central and eastern portions of Canada parts of the Central Great Plains, and the Northeastern United States from December 20th to 23rd of 2013. If you live in Northern Canada, you can expect your first blizzard of the season. There's three different ways a blizzard can be developed. The first way is the same way as thunderstorms, but instead of lightning, it often brings cold temperatures and snow. The second way is in Canada and the Northern United States, warm air masses filled with moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and Atlantic Ocean meets a cold Arctic air mass under a strong jet stream. The third way is the combination of strong winds and the lake effect. When, air, when an air mass moves across a large body of water, it picks up moisture from the water. Moisture condenses to form snow. Take caution because this blizzard might be as severe as the 2004 blizzard, White Wan which occurred on February 18th and 19th, 2004, and dumped 50 to 70 centimeters of snow over Nova Scotia. Now, time for our Back in Time segment, where we remember a historic weather event. Today's theme, Freezer Bowl. January of 1982 was very cold. The 1981 AFC Championship game held in Cincinnati was nicknamed the Freezer Bowl due to the negative 22.8 degrees Celsius temperature 
and the negative 50.6 degrees Celsius wind chill. A cold wave hit. This weather phenomenon was a rapid fall in temperature within a 24 hour time period and required increased protection to the city. A cold wave is declared once certain conditions are met. The rate at which the temperature falls and the coldest it reaches depending on its geographical location and the time of the year. Cold waves are formed when cold air masses over large areas are brought in, often from polar regions. That concludes today's Back in Time segment. Breaking news, a large ship far out at sea was just struck by a rogue wave and is in severe danger. These large spontaneous ocean waves occur far out at sea and are often a threat to large ships. These waves are greater than twice the size of surrounding waves and are very unpredictable. Although there is no definite ex explanation for rogue waves, undersea earthquakes, glacial calving, and coastal landslides can cause rogue waves as well as tsunamis and tidal waves. MS Louis Majesty was struck by three successive 8 meter waves while crossing the Gulf of Lyon on a Mediterranean cruise. Two passengers were killed and the waves which struck without warning were all abnormally high in, in respect to the sea swell at the time of the incident. This is Lauren and Brooke signing out for World Weather Network. You can keep up to date with all the world weather by following us on Twitter and liking our page on Facebook at World Weather Network. Love it.